First of all, just wanted to thank everybody for joining us this morning. Uh, it's great to see so many familiar faces and indeed actually uh, to see some new faces on the call this morning. So by way of introduction, just to start, uh, my name is Carl Swansbury partner here at RG and I head up our corporate finance business uh, and I'm delighted this morning uh, to be able to chair what will be a really interactive 90-minute uh, discussion focusing in on the area of board effectiveness um, particularly focusing in on why does a board exist within a business um, how should a board be composed and indeed what makes the right people effective within a board environment. Moving on to our guest speakers this morning. Um, so I'm delighted to be joined uh, today by experienced non-executive director and chairman, Andrew Marsh, uh, along with um, founder of the Experience Bank, Peter Neal. Let me pose the first question to you both, which uh, I think will get our discussion off to a flying start. Uh, which was posed by one of my clients, Premier Roof Systems, who sadly can't be with us this morning. And their question was, why does a company actually need a board? And at what point in a business's development should the shareholders be seriously thinking about constructing a board? It's always a fascinating one, actually. So, um, so why do companies need a board? Well, companies need them for different reasons at different stages, okay? So if you're a company that's getting investment through, typically you will, you will be required to have a board through the investment process. Um, but if you don't need to have a board, and it's a choice, so whether you're at early stage or whether you're, you're organically funding as you go through, the reasons you'll probably want to have a board are for external advice, strategic thinking, different perspectives uh, on life, diversity of perception. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Gary Forter. I'm a Divisional Director of Bruin Dolphin uh, here in Newcastle. Um, Andrew, Peter, my question is, you know, is there a minimum size board? Because as businesses grow, and they may have just gone from owner manager yeah. up to obviously, you know, possibly a board, you know, where, where does a board start from a number point of view? And is there a most effective exec to non-exec ratio? that actually a board should comprise of? I think the smaller the organisation, the earlier the stage of the organisation, ironically, they could have perhaps a disproportionately large board, but it would be a board of advisors, an advisory board, very helpful for uh, a, a lonely founding entrepreneur looking to commercialise their business. So yeah, Brian, I head up the Handels Bank and Operation here in the city centre. Uh, so the question, oh, I'm not sure it's whether it's a question or a statement really, because I've come across this myself in the past. It's just whether those businesses at the smaller end who are growing or potential for growth, whether they actually realize the benefits and the input that a, a non-exec can bring. The experienced bank spends an awful lot of time championing the value of the right non-exec director at the right time, because there are a lot of founding entrepreneurs who've done a great job establishing and building their businesses. but. Um, uh, do have a blind spot themselves in in you know not realising they don't know what they don't know. So I'm uh, Joe Guy. I'm uh, one of the directors of AJ Recruitment and iFast Recruit, which is um, a tech business. And um, so I've got a couple of questions. So first of all, around you know where do you find what where's the best place to go to find good non-execs? I think we referred to earlier that you know there are kind of serial non-execs around and um, that kind of do the do the rounds so where do I go to find somebody that's good and right for my business I would I would encourage everybody if you are recruiting treat it like any other recruitment you know any other recruitment you, 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 you're looking at the company values will they you know will they live the values because what you don't want is somebody who's going to be disruptive at that level you know do they have do they have uh, the, you know can I work with them you know uh, is this somebody I'm able to work with? Can I, you know, do I trust them? Do I, are we able to have the right level of conversation? Will they add value to what we're doing? We get approached by people who would very much like to become non-execs, you know, for various reasons. Um, I, and um, I'd appreciate, you know, advice and um, views from Andrew and Peter in particular around how you know, good people with a lot to give can break into what seems sometimes to be a little bit of a club. The first thing I would ask them is, so what do you mean by portfolio career and why do you want to do that? What what are you 
wanting to do exactly because we've as we've said earlier in this this session today non-executive type work can cover a multitude of things um, uh, it can be consulting it can be advising it can be formally non-exec director it can be governor it can be trustee all of them are quite different it's been an incredibly interesting uh, interactive session and of course I think what the discussion has demonstrated uh, is just how complex the area of board effectiveness is if it is given the thought that it should be given. Um, but of course, the impact an effective board can have on a business is significant. Hire at leisure and fire at pace. Getting really good boards and getting them effective um, is a strategic resource and to use it as a strategic resource. And anybody, yeah, I, I, anybody who wants to be a non-exec or, a, or, a, or a, a trustee, it is one of the most rewarding roles.